Welcome back to another episode of Jack's Tech Corner. This is yet another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Now, before we get started, make sure uh, if you're enjoying these videos, you check out my website. It's right here, jackstechcorner.com. And it's listed along the side of the video. If you look at the right where it says more information, click on that on the YouTube video and you'll be able to go right to the link and what I wanted you to check out here is I actually wanted you to check out all of the DVD collections I have to offer. The DVDs are great because they're high resolution. They're really a much higher resolution than the YouTube videos. You can see things clearly. You can pause it and stop it. And, and you know what I'm talking about. And you can actually at that point, then you can start working on your videos and have a really good way to, um, to learn Photoshop elements. So these are great tutorials. Don't forget, there's also a Mac uh, edition here. It has Photoshop Elements 6 and iPhoto. And a lot of you have asked, there's also a lot of Elements 6 and Elements 7 on both of these DVDs. So it's a great collection. Again, if you don't feel like purchasing a DVD, maybe you just want to drop a donation in the donation bucket here to kind of help the website. And just to help out to buy new software or whatever comes along that we might need to keep these videos going. By all means, there's a donate button. And if you want to, please sign up for the forums. Right here it says our forums. And you come in here and there's all kinds of stuff, not just Photoshop. There's stuff in here, uh, uh, just different questions. Um, and down here at the bottom there's Elements version 6, Elements version 7. And you can see there's a lot of different threads going on. So jump in here. Uh, right now there's 147 registered users. And that always surprises me because there's... 20, over 2,500 of you out there actually uh, subscribe to the YouTube videos. So with that said, let's get started with this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, as you can see in this picture here, we are going to create some motion blur. Now what motion blur gives you, it gives you that effect or that feeling that this is actually blurred back and it gives you the, you know, it brings out the person in the foreground really nicely. And I'm going to show you how to do this in just a few easy steps. So let's go ahead and get started with creating a motion blur. We're going to edit and I'm going to revert and take us all the way back to the beginning. And we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do as always is we're going to do a control J and we're going to duplicate that background layer so we're working on this layer here. Okay, the one that's actually clicked on, layer one. Now the first thing to do when you're doing a motion blur like that, where you're trying to take all this background and blur it back in, um, it, it feels like it's racing away. That's kind of what the uh, the effect that we're creating here. What we want to do first is just create a real rough quick selection. And we do that simply by fitting this to screen. And then let's go ahead and just use our uh, rectangular marquee tool start the top here and we're just going to select right around here you can select as much as this you want but I find it's better effect if you keep the person uh, more in the foreground because you're gonna blur the background we'll go right below the feet just like this now we don't want the person to be blurred so we have to actually take this person out of the selection and the marquee tool is not going to work because we're not going to be able to add that in it's going to be squared off so we want to make sure we do a selection to do that, we can use one of my favorite tools here, the Quick Selection tool. And you're going to see here it's plus or minus. We're going to subtract because we're taking away from this selection. Let's raise that brush size up a little bit and just start going right over your person. Just like so. Around this leg, around this arm, because we want the arms in there. Now if you go out like this, what we want to do is we want to actually add to the selection because this is our selection, so we're adding to that selection. I'm going to drop the brush size down using the left bracket key. And we're going to add to the selection here. It's like so, and if we mess up, we'll go back here so we make sure her face is in the selection. And then you want to really go over and look. So the best way to do that is use your magnifying glass. And let's zoom in on this area right here so we can go in and look and see where we're at. 
that looks pretty good so far except right here uh, where the legs are split you always get a lot of people forget this area and then that's not blurred so it doesn't quite look right so again let's click on our tool here we are taking away actually at this point we're adding because we're going to add this into our selection and don't get nervous if you click on the wrong tool just go back up and think about it again and uh, click on the right tool and we are going to just simply click on um, minus here because we got just a piece of leg here and you can go around here we're going to add this a little bit right here might need to get that brush size a little bit smaller and we're going to add right in here okay now that it looks pretty good to us we can go ahead and we can start our blur let's go ahead and view let's fit this to screen again and now what you're going to do is simply go to filter we are going to go to blur and then radial blur Normally by default this is set on a spin blur where it spins the background out. But we want to make it look like motion so we're going to do a zoom blur. And you can start this low, see what it looks like, and you can always revert and go back. So let me show you how to do it. Let's say we start this at 5. And we hit blur. You can see there we have a real small blur. It's kind of like it's a soft focus background. That's not the real effect you're looking for. So go to edit undo blur and let's just add it again back to radial blur this time we're going to set this thing up to I found 15 works pretty good and you can see right here in this little picture area what the blur is going to amount to see if you get it real high it's really going to pull it back let's look at 80 80 is really going to pull it back you're getting a thick motion in there, but you blurred everything to the point where you can't even recognize what it is. I don't really like that. You're, you're creating a sense of movement or a sense of that background uh, being pulled away from the person. So again, let's just undo that. I find that the best on this one is to type in 15. There you go. You got a nice blur. You can see up in here where the lines are, where it's actually feeling like it's pulling back now from your screen. Uh, it's pulling back from your subject. And see what I mean by right here where the legs are split? That's actually blurred back too, where it's pulling the road back through. So now if we do select, deselect, you can see now we have the effect that we want. Now, the last step you're going to want to do is, it doesn't quite look right when this is blurred and this out here is not. So we're just going to do a simple cropping. Click on your crop tool. Left click with your mouse and just pull around wherever your blur is. Once you have that, click the little check box. You can double click the hand and make it full screen. And there you go. Now there's a nice simple perfect looking motion blur where everything's pulling back. It's almost looking like it's a time warp and the person standing there and I picked this up because she looks like she's standing there thinking and the world is kind of warping behind her so it's kind of an interesting uh, interesting looking picture you know be creative when you work with Photoshop elements use your imagination it, every picture does not necessarily have to look like how you started it well I hope folks that you've enjoyed this video tutorial please take a few minutes check out the website jackstechcorner.com sign up for the forums the more people we have in there the more questions we get and the more fun it is to hang out in there and maybe learn with each other and as I always say until next time keep those shutters clicking keep the editor editing and I'll see you back here very soon bye for now